everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So today I'm sharing with you an IKEA Antelope high chair review. So I don't know about you, but when I first looked at weaning, the IKEA high chair was just talked about so, so much. We actually chose to buy a different high chair, so we've been using a wooden one for the past six months, but we have had to borrow another high chair, and luckily we had someone close to us that has let us borrow the IKEA high chair, so we've been using that the past couple of weeks, and yeah, I've just been really surprised at a few features because it has been so popular, so I thought that I'd put together a little review for you, so I really hope that you find it helpful, and let's get straight into it. So I'm going to start off with the pros or the good points about the high chair because there definitely are some and the first thing is that the tray is removable so our current high chair you can't take off the tray so the IKEA one you can so you don't have to take it off every time you put the baby in and out but it may make it a bit easier if your baby is on the larger side perhaps but and you can also take it off to clean and just take it to the sink so that is a really good plus point. I would say the tray is a pretty good size. I actually thought it was bigger than our current high chair, but we've measured it and it's not because my husband was saying it was smaller and I was sure it was bigger. But I guess because it's like a rectangle and ours is like curved, the area space perhaps might be bigger overall. But I would say it's a fairly good size tray. It is quite flat as well. It has got a lip around the edge, which is supposed I suppose to stop food going off the edge but in reality you know my son literally can like take things off and throw it over the side so that's not going to help but maybe when your baby's young it might help a little bit and so yeah it is fairly easy to clean. The seat itself is also very easy to clean because it's just basically a lump of plastic it's all in one there's no kind of little nooks and crannies so it is simple to just wipe it clean you can also buy a padded insert too from ikea so that is a really good plus point because that will obviously make the seat a little bit comfier for your baby the ikea high chair is really easy to assemble so there are basically just a few parts so there is the seat there's the tray which clips in and then there are the four legs and they just pop into place because they've got little slots with little holes in if that makes sense and yeah it's really really quick and easy and because it does disassemble is that the right word disassemble so easily it would be really good I think to take on holiday with you because it's not going to take too much room in your car and if you just wanted to take it away with you like you didn't have a high chair wherever you were going or if you wanted to use it at like the nan's house or something like that that'd be really good so you could also take the tray off and then you can probably get your baby a little bit closer to the table. Now it's not height adjustable, so it kind of depends on the height of your table, but in theory, if you took the tray off, you could get your baby very, very close to your table. Having said that, I think by the time you want them that close to your table, you could just get a booster seat anyway, but I will say that probably is an advantage of the IKEA high chair. I think the best thing about the IKEA high chair, and probably why it is so popular and it is so much talked about, is the price. It is so, so cheap. So the high chair with the tray is only £12 from IKEA, and I think that you can buy it separately as well. So if you just wanted to buy a replacement tray, whether yours got damaged or something, it's only £2. So you can buy the chair for 10 and then the tray is 2 So it's really, really cheap. Ikea also sell the padded insert and a cover and together that is £6 so if you did want to buy that as well that comes to a total cost of £18 so that is super super cheap. I don't know if it is but it probably is the cheapest high chair that I have definitely seen and you can buy it on Amazon too because obviously at the moment we can't get out to Ikea it is closed during this pandemic at the moment but if you don't live near one you have to pay IKEA delivery, I, I would think anyway, and that can be really expensive. So the fact that you can buy on Amazon is a really good thing too. So those are all the good features and the plus points that I can think of, and I'm now going to move into what I think are the disadvantages or the cons with the IKEA high chair. As I said, I have been using a different high chair for the past six months, so I think that is why I have been finding the IKEA high, gear high chair so different, and I think it's just been really good to compare it to our current high chair, the one that we normally use. Otherwise, if I'd have just started using the IKEA high chair, I might have a slightly different opinion on it, but because I've been used to a different one, and this one is so different, yeah, hopefully this means that this review is coming from someone that feels like they know what they're talking about, hopefully. And yeah, so let's get on with it. So a major, major, what I think is a flaw really in the design, I don't think it's very good at all, is the fact that the harness, so the straps that go around your baby, have only three points. So that means there's 
like a strap either side of the waist and then one up through the legs, so that's three. They do recommend that the high chair you use actually has five so that you have the shoulder straps as well. So the IKEA high chair doesn't support your baby from any shoulder straps at all and it does mean that your baby is less supported. Now I think that is why it is recommended that you have five straps so that your baby is as supported and as stable as possible. Absolutely, in the beginning, especially when they are so young, you know, when they're just six months starting off, of course, they need to be sitting up by themselves to be in a high chair, in theory, but I'm sure as they get older, they obviously do get a bit stronger. In the very beginning, they might still be a little unstable. So the fact that this only has like a waist belt, I just think isn't really good at all. Also because of that, it means your baby can move around loads. So as I said, our son is now one year old, and in our other high chair with the shoulder straps, obviously he can move a little bit forward and back and side to side, but in the IKEA high chair, he literally can come right forward, his face can touch the table, he can lean really far over to the side, and it just doesn't look very safe, that's what I'm worried about. And he, as I said, he, he enjoys chucking food off the table and stuff, he's kind of at that age, going through that stage now where he's learned how to do that. And sometimes, as he's doing it, the chair is moving a little bit as well, so I just don't feel very comfortable with it, and I wouldn't personally feel comfortable leaving him in that, if that makes sense, by himself. Obviously, I would supervise him if he was eating, but, you know, if I was kind of in the kitchen making food and I couldn't see him, I don't really feel that safe with it. There is also a big gap between your baby's tummy and the high chair tray, which in some ways you think that's good because that kind of gives you room to get your baby in without taking the tray off, but I also think that's another reason why your baby can move around so, so much. I've also found that as my baby is moving around lots in it, it is, as I said, it's making the high chair move, but the actual legs are moving itself, so the legs don't have a great contact point with the floor. The feet of the high chair legs are actually rounded, and as he's kind of like going side to side and like mucking about and stuff, the high chair itself is moving slightly and we can tell that because we have a splash mat underneath the high chair and at the end of the meal it's just all like wrinkled up where it's just moved about so much. A key reason why we didn't choose the IKEA high chair is the fact it doesn't fold up so obviously a lot of people have limited space, high chairs are big things, you know the kind of base of them they do take up a lot of room and we just didn't have that space so we, we really wanted a high chair that folded up. Having said that, we don't fold it up that often. I think I spoke about that in my Weeding Essentials video. But the IKEA one doesn't even have the option to, so if you were having people around or whatever. But as I said, it is easy to just take the legs off, so you could do that. But I'm just saying, yeah, you can fold it up, so that could be a disadvantage for you too. Also, there is no footrest, so again, it is recommended that babies have a footrest so that they just feel a bit more supported when they're eating. Currently, our son can't reach the footrest of our other high chair anyway, so I will say that. But I have also seen people say that you can put something around the legs of a high chair to kind of make a footrest, like an exercise band. And I have seen you can actually buy, I think it was from Etsy, people have made footrests to fit the IKEA high chair. So it's not like a definite no-no. So don't, if that's the only reason that it puts you off, don't be put off because you can figure something out and make it have a footrest. But that is one thing as well. As I said, the tray is easy to clean and the seat is easy to clean, but the underside of the table has just got so many like holes and like little fiddly bits and I don't find that easy to clean at all, especially as your baby gets older and starts chucking food around. You probably will find the underneath of the tray will get food on it too. Obviously their hands will go around it and that is really fiddly to clean. So it's not as simple to clean as you might first think. As I said earlier, the seat of the high chair is just one big plastic piece and that is obviously not going to be very comfortable for your baby to sit on. So we don't have the padded insert at the moment anyway. So if they are just sat in the high chair as it is, I can't imagine that would be very comfortable at all. It is quite big as well. As I said, you can buy the padded insert from Ikea, so that will probably hold them a bit better and will be comfier. but. That's not to sit on, it's only, from what I can see, it's the two sides and the back. So they are still sat on hard plastic. And I just think that's not going to be very comfortable, especially for the first time weaning. You know, sitting in a high chair is probably a bit of an alien concept for them. They've never had to sit on such a hard seat before, probably. And yeah, I just don't think it's that comfortable. Again, you can buy things, you can put things down. Like I've put a few tea towels in the bottom to try and make it feel a little bit more comfy. Again, I've seen people selling these on Etsy. So it's not kind of the end of the world, 
but I'm just saying, if you are looking at buying a padded seat, obviously that would just bump up the cost as well. Now the tray of the high chair does have a lip all the way round, which as I said could be a good feature, it's I suppose to try and stop food going off, but I don't think in reality that would work anyway. But because, I don't know if it's because of that, but when we are putting our son's bib on and it does up kind of across the tray, we use the bibido and another one like that, there is a bit of a gap and I don't remember there being such a big gap with our other high chair, so I don't know if it's that lip that is causing a problem or, or whatever it is, but yeah, the lip seems to have a bit of a gap so that food can easily, easily go underneath the bib. The lip of the high chair may stop it a little bit, but yeah, I just feel a bit uneasy about that. I think it could be a little bit messy. Also, the tray of the high chair kind of goes around the baby, like the actual tray. So our current high chair, the tray kind of stops like halfway to his side and then it's just like an arm. Whereas the Ikea one, the whole tray just goes around. And again, I think that could just get a bit messy because that's just exactly where the arms are and where your bib ends. So I don't think that's a very good thing either. There is a solid bar as part of the seat, which is between your baby's legs. Obviously this is good because it helps them to stop slipping out or anything, but I could see that that could potentially be a problem for when your baby is a bit bigger. I don't think the leg holes look that big to me. I've seen a couple of re reviews saying the same thing. In our high chair, we've just got a strap, so it's a bit more like flexible, but this is quite a thick bar in between, so I think it could get in the way of your baby's legs. Also, again, it probably might not be that comfortable for them too. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial one. I don't know if I'm right in saying this, because I know a lot of high chairs do have plastic trays. As I say, you probably would just think that's just like easy to clean, which yes, it, it may be, I don't know. Our wooden one is really easy to clean too, and it's nice and flat. But what I would say, I think what we've been finding is that my son probably finds it a bit harder to pick up food. You know, if you've got slightly like wet food, obviously it's not that easy for babies to pick it up anyway. But on the wooden one, it's slightly grainy, so it's a bit of resistance. Whereas on the plastic tray, it is just so smooth, the food just like slides around a little bit. So I personally do prefer a wooden tray for that reason. So those are all my pros and cons. I just want to say a couple of other things. So the first thing I wanted to say as well is that the high chair isn't height adjustable, which I haven't said in the cons because I don't think it's necessarily an essential for a high chair. Our current one doesn't height adjust either. I think it is a bonus. Like if your one has it or if you can't decide between one and that's the only difference, then yeah, it could be useful because as I said, you can get your baby up to the table a bit better. But the IKEA one isn't height adjustable. Also, when looking at a high chair, I do think attractiveness does play a part because it is such a big feature. And obviously, if that's the only reason why you want a high chair or not, you know, that's not, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Obviously, safety and all the other things are your priorities. That's why I kind of left this little bit to last. But I'm just saying, if it, if this high chair suits your house, then it'll be amazing. Obviously, quite like a modern one. It's white and metal. But we really did like our wooden one because it just suited our dining room and it just looks like a proper piece of furniture and we do find it's a lot more sturdy and stable I think because it is wooden and the base is better so yeah that's kind of why we chose our one anyway but you may want to think about that too. So that concludes my review of the IKEA Antelope high chair and I think that's how you say Antelope, hopefully I've not been saying it wrong the whole way through and my overall opinion then is that I would not buy it. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend it but personally the biggest thing why I wouldn't recommend it is the fact it only has three straps harness. Now, as I said, I think I have seen people say that they should have five straps because that's the most safest option. Obviously, so it holds the baby stable. You don't want them like flopping forward when they're eating. That could be obviously a choking hazard. I have seen some people say they prefer three straps because they think they could get baby out quicker. But in my personal opinion and what I have seen, I saw on a website called Made For Mums, I think, and they did recommend that you have a five point harness. So that would definitely put me off buying the IKEA high chair. If you just wanted it to go on holiday or if it was just a temporary one and you were just using it every now and again, like I said, if it was a grandparent's house or something like that, then I think that would be fine. But I think as your main high chair, I personally wouldn't want to buy it. Baby can move around too much and I don't feel safe and I don't think that it's supportive at all. I do much prefer our wooden one, it just feels a lot more stable, the base is better, it doesn't move about, he can't move about and the tray is just easier and yeah I just really do prefer it. As I said it's really good that the tray in the IKEA one does lift off because our current one doesn't do that but overall the IKEA high chair I'm afraid isn't for me. 
as I said, it's really, really cheap. So if you don't have the money to buy any other one, then I think it's okay. Um, obviously, it's passed safety tests and whatnot. But yeah, that's just my opinion. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. As I said, these are all just my opinions and my experience of using it. I'm sure there are loads of people and there are so many people that do really rave about the IKEA high chair and I'm sure there'll be people commenting on this saying how much they love theirs. But that is just my view on it and my take on it. So I really hope that this helps you, even if you do end up buying it, just some things to consider and to think about. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are looking at weaning, then I have done a weaning essentials guide and also what my baby eats in a day. And I have got a weaning hacks video coming up too. So go and check out my channel and have a look at my other videos. If you are a first time mum like me, then I really hope that you would consider subscribing to my channel. Just hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this, just please hit the thumbs up button because it really helps push the video out so that other people can find it and hopefully benefit from my review as well. So that is everything I wanted to say. Thank you so, so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone.